Microsoft Word 2010, Creating a Table of Contents. Word 2010 makes it easy to create a table of contents for your document, as long as you are using styles to identify your main and subheadings. In this video, we will discuss using the built-in styles Heading 1, 2, and 3 for headings and subheadings within the document. We will then create a table of contents and discuss the different options available. And once the table of contents is generated, we'll use the hyperlink capability to go to different locations within the document. And finally, we'll go over how to update a table of contents, which is a critical step before you print. So let's get started. There are a couple of different ways to create a table of contents within a document. You could create a page at the beginning of your document and then manually type in or copy all of your headings and subheadings from within the document. And then using tabs and possibly tab leaders, putting in your page numbers. The problem with doing it that way is it's very labor intensive. And if your document changes and things move around, you'll have to go and manually go and update all the page numbers. We're going to create a table of contents using Word's table of contents feature. Before we do that, we do need to go through our document and apply the style Heading 1 to our main headings and apply Heading 2 to our subheadings and if we need to, Heading 3 for our sub-subheadings. So I'm at the top of my document. I've got the Introduction and Welcome to Espresso Yourself. So I'm going to click in that and on the Home tab in the Styles group, I'm going to go ahead and click on Heading 1. And then I'll go and click into About This Handbook, and that's my subheading. I'm going to make that Heading 2. In this document, we also have some subheadings underneath our subheadings. So I'll make those Heading 3s. And I would go through my entire document, and I would format all my main headings with Heading 1, all my subheadings with Heading 2, and so on. I've already done that for the rest of the document, so I'm going to go ahead and control home on the keyboard to get up to the top. The next step is to make room for a table of contents. And you'll probably want to start it on its own page at the top of your document. So we could create just a regular page break here, or we can create a section break. And section breaks are good if you want to have different page numbers on your table of contents from the rest of your document. So I'm going to put in a section break by going up to the Page Layout tab and in the Page Setup group I'm going to click on Breaks and I'm going to do a Next Page Section Break. I'm going to go ahead and click on to that page. That's my new page. And I'm just going to quickly go and change the page numbering for that by going to the Insert and then Page Number and Format Page Number. And I'll make those Roman numerals start with the Roman numeral I and OK. And so my table of contents will begin on Roman numeral I and the rest of my document will still have the regular numbering system. So I'm going to control home again, get up to the top and get my cursor where I'd like to place my table of contents. There are some quick built-in table of contents we can use and to get to the table of contents you would go to the references tab and you would go to Table of Contents. The built-in Quick Table of Contents are Automatic Table 1, Automatic Table 2, and Manual Table. We're going to use the Automatic Table 2, and by clicking on it, it places the Table of Contents in my document very quickly and according to the styles that I have attached within this document. So I'll control home again, get up to the top. So I can see my introduction and welcome to Espresso Yourself. That's a main heading. Then I've got the subheading about this handbook. And then the heading three is underneath that. If I don't like this table of contents, I do need to remove this one before I put in a different one. Or else I'll have two table of contents. So I'm going to go back to table of contents and to remove table of contents. So another way to do a table of contents is to go back to table of contents and insert a table of contents is down at the bottom. And a dialog box will come up 
with more options than the drop down. Now this dialog box is very similar to the ones in previous versions of Word. So I'll see a print preview on the left hand side and this is how the table of contents would look on a printed copy. And then I also have the hyperlink capability. So if I'm viewing a document online, it will put in hyperlinks to go quickly down to different headings within my document. I have other options in here. I can not show the page numbering if I don't wish to, but it's usually good to have that in a table of contents. I could have the numbers right next to the headings, but again, usually it's nice to have them right aligned. And you do have different tab leaders you can choose as well from within here. Down below you do have different formats. So you can see as I click on each of them up at the top how that table of contents would look. So when I find one that I like, I can also choose how many levels I want. So if I only want to see my heading 1s and 2s, I can choose Show Levels 2. But I know I have some heading threes in there as well, so I'm going to choose three levels. And then when I'm done, I'll click on OK. And again, I'll have my table of contents in here. And this one I had a little bit more say on how I wanted that to look. Once you've got your table of contents in your document, you can use the hyperlink capability to go to different locations within the document. So if I'd like to go quickly to the performance appraisals, when I point to performance appraisals, I'll see a little screen tip that will tell me that I can hold down control on my keyboard and click on this to follow the link or go to that location. So I'm going to hold down control and my mouse now will turn to a hand and I'll click on performance appraisals and it will take me to that location within the document. To get back, I can do control home again on my keyboard and I'll be back into my table of contents. If at this point you go through your document and delete items or move items, your table of contents may no longer be up to date. So to update your table of contents, you can right click on your table of contents and you can go to update field. In here I have the option to only update the page numbers. So if I haven't changed the headings in any way, I could do that or update the entire table. I'm going to update the entire table just to be safe and then OK. Another way to update the table is on the References tab and Update Table. That will bring you to that same dialog box. You should always update your table of contents before you print. And that's how you can create a table of contents in Word 2010.